Let's talk about broken open. Welcome to Harvesting You. Today's conversation is about Aubrey's book, Broken Open. Let's begin Harvesting You. This podcast is sponsored by A2D, Addicted to Dance Company. Check us out on the web, a2dance.com. We're growing foundation, giving back to our community, and changing lives is our mission. Let's talk about Broken Open. And a lot has happened since, since I wrote that book, interestingly enough. You know, more growth has taken place. I had that question. I've had some interesting questions that have provoked thought for my, for my own self and kind of reflect on, wow, it really did take me two and a half years to get this book together. And then going through just the, the process of publishing, editing, all the things was its own journey, something new, something I've never experienced before. Um, you know, I have been blogging for a few years, but I think it was, it was about over a decade ago, I said to one of my mentors who then ended up being a teacher of mine in the dance industry. I said to her, you know, you really need to write a book. You've been through a lot in your lifetime. I've witnessed it. I've known you since I was nine years old. You really need to write a book. And I think about, I don't know, six years ago or something, because we still keep in touch often. She says, I think you're the one that's supposed to write a book. And I'm like, huh, I don't know, maybe. And then I just started to put things together in a side and in a file. And then I really was like, okay, I'm going to write a book. And I started talking about writing a book. And the more I talked about it, the more I put intentional thought into it and um, putting it together was not something where I just sat down and, you know, wrote a certain, certain amount of words a day. Um, it was more, I had so much insight and wisdom that I feel I've gained over the past decade or two of my life. And then looking back on my childhood and reflecting and thinking one version of what I grew up with and then looking back on it and being like, oh, <laughs> right? We all have those moments in our life. So that's this broken open. Um, through the process of writing this book, I had become a life coach. Um, I've always been a mentor. I'm an entrepreneur in many ways. I've always been a mentor to children um, from little people, toddlers, all the way up through adults. And even parents at times would come to me through the dance studio. Um, maybe I was just always easy to talk to. I always thought I was pretty easily approachable. And Broken Open is dedicated to humanity. And it's funny because some people who are even um, close to me still have not read it or have read a part of it or have read half of it. And I think there's a little bit of a fear factor there of like, what are they, what are they reading? What are they walking into? And then I have a lot of people who have read it, who have not given me back like, um, like not giving me any, like, what do you think? Give me a critique. What were your thoughts? What'd you get out of that? Because this is not about my life. It's not a personal biography. It is a blueprint for humanity. Well, I read every word and the squats, the hundred squats is in there. I know that's in there. Oh, it's in here. Yeah. Yeah. But I forgot about that. And then you reminded me of that recently. And I, <laughs> when I read it, I was like, oh, she does a hundred squats when she's brushing her teeth. How's that? Like, that's 
that's life changing. And just that little, <laughs> little thing to know about you. And I've known you for a long time. So there are a lot of little personal things in the book, even though you don't really get into your personal story of what mm -hmm. exactly was broken open. And broken open is such a powerful phrase that I wonder where that phrase came from. Was it through experiences that you had or is it something you just sort of one day I was like I'm putting it all out here I am broken open or I'm broken open like I'm open to everything now like there's so many different ways that you can look at that phrase yeah like I wrote the book in different chapters before I had the, the title I uh, went back and forth and really broken open was the best description of if I had to put it into two words, what had happened to me, I had been broken open to, and, and in, in good ways, but you have to go through the ugly sometimes to get down to the good and to recognize um, who you are. And I have such this solid friendship with myself like I I have people say to me often like god I how did how did you how are you still okay with this or if there's an argument or a conflict or a conversation and, and it's I'm not okay with it I'm just at a point in my life where I am so able to go into my soul self, what I like to call my soul self, which is your intuition, then that space inside of me, then I'm just able to find that ease and calmness. But it took a lot of stuff to happen for me to recognize I even had that space. I'm curious too, like, when did you realize you were that be that you have this intuitive sense about you is it something that you've always had and one day you were like oh that's the name for it that's what it is always had never as strongly as I do even today even two years ago when I wrote it it wasn't as strong as it is today always have had that sixth sense always have had um uh, the hair on my arm stands up when something didn't feel right. The more experiences I've had with people, and I feel like the position I was put into, I mean, I knew at a very young age that I wanted to be in the dance industry. We'll take that as like the start. And before I met my husband, I was going to move out to LA and become a choreographer because that sounded great. And then I was like, I want to open up a dance studio. I want to make a difference. I, I, I want to, I felt like I had such a rapport with children. I could just identify um, and, and, and empathize with them in a different light. Like before I had my own kids. So going through just being a dance teacher, a dance studio owner, a mentor, all of that, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, the, you know, tr trying to please everybody. I learned so much about myself through that, you know, taking a partner in for a, a quick minute and then realizing, yeah, that's not for me. Like just, there are no coincidences in life. I've been put through every single mountain and goodness and happiness for, for now, for today, for this. And it's so simple to tell somebody to read a book, to try to, to, try to find some inspiration and some self-reflection. And people will be like, yeah, yeah, like I don't read or I don't have time or I don't have time. I, you know, I always hear that I don't have time. And the most important thing about this book for me, for humanity is there's, 
it, it's it's not it's not a hard read. It's simple. It's small. There's so much that you are able to pull out or think because yes, I did. I do go into some tiny personal detail things in here, but the way this was written and it was purposefully written so you can align with, I know I have a situation that's relatable to that. I could see how that would happen. I could see how maybe um, I was in this mindset or maybe, right? It like kind of makes you reflect back on to situations and relationships and business, you know, job choices in your life. Um, there, I, I, I am working on a part two. It's in slow motion. It's slow motion. It's not at the top of my list, but it's something that when I feel that impulse to write, I'll grab my computer and I'll open that file and I'll add to it. And that's kind of how this started. It was very messy. The chapters were not written in order. I ended up moving things around. So it made more sense to the reader. Um, the Audible was a huge goal of mine uh, and doing that with this guy, Bob, who runs Coastal Digital, it was, it was such a, um, it was something I really wanted to do and was just proud of myself for doing it because I wanted the reader to feel like they were sitting or the listener to feel like they, I was sitting next to them. Like those moments where you're like talking to yourself or you're talking out loud. Yeah, it's like I, I wanted to want you to feel like I get it. I get you. I yeah. hear you. I see you. And it's difficult to say you don't have time to listen to something. Yes. Because that's such a habit that most of us have is, and, and I, I enjoy reading. I'm an avid reader. I always have been, but I, I do know that with, with our phones and everything and all of the different streaming platforms, there's so much content that we can get easily instead of reading it, that having an audible, I think is a beautiful thing and feeling like you're listening to you read, read it to me is a beautiful thing. I want to talk about a little bit about some of the concepts you have in your book, because there's the, you have talk about a fixed mindset. You talk about being separated versus kept. And that's another thing that I haven't encountered anyone else really talking about that as being separated versus kept and what that really means. Yeah. So. Okay, so I will give everyone watching a quick review of what this chapter eight separated versus kept means. Does that sound good? Will that, that help? Yeah. Okay. So being separated, I define as being apart from ourselves, like puzzle pieces sitting in a box. All the pieces are there, but not connected to create the image or the final product. We all have these pieces inside of ourselves. How we learn to identify where all the parts link together is an important part of this journey. When we are kept, we are pieced together, connecting through the threads, corners, and ridges that make us whole. Once we are in a space of being kept, if a puzzle piece detaches or weakens, then we're able to sew that piece back into place with ease. So that's my version on what it feels like to be in this space now. And I know that I'm in this kept space where when you asked if I always had this like intuitive insight, I did, but it was separated. 
and I didn't know how to gather and pull. And the more things I was put through in life, because we all have stuff, I made the choice to say, what is my part in this? What am I doing wrong? I stopped playing victim in relationships. It wasn't me. Well, part of it was. And then that helped me identify my truths and, and fix those fixed mindsets of what I thought I knew or what I, I thought I knew at 23 years old, opening up a dance studio. You, 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 16 years later, I know so much more now and I still don't know it all, right? So, you know, I do love that chapter. That was a very um, like defining moment, putting this chapter together. And, you know, my husband too actually said, what do you mean by separated versus kept? Like as the title. And then when I read that to him, like he had to, I had to read that a few times because if you're someone who, who's like, wait, I, I hear that, but I, I'm not sure how to connect that. Mm -hmm. There's so much there to learn. And there's so much there that, that just speaks to an abundance of opportunity. So for example, I'll just use Ava since we've talked about her in the past and those mamas who are following know a little bit of Ava's story. That was part of my journey as well. And by me finding who I am, when those days of, it felt like the world was falling apart and turning, and a piece of my puzzle would detach. I have the space and I have the ability inside of me to put it back together and to be okay with not being okay. And that doesn't mean that sometimes I need to, you know, have a good cry in the shower once a year or, or, or you know, but I'm not a chaos coordinator anymore. I'm not a, uh, I, I don't hustle anymore. Those words may seem great in other, I don't know, other meanings, but in life, I didn't want that. That didn't make me happy. That didn't bring me joy. So broken open is really, I found my joy of who I am. So no matter what's going on in the world around me, if I can't, I have learned the most important thing is the, the number one friendship, the number one relationship in your life is the one you have with yourself. Because how can you show up and really love your partner and your children? How can you be an example for them if you don't love you? Absolutely. And this book is a blueprint for everyone to find that space to fall in love with themselves. This book is, it's short, but very challenging and challenging in the sense of questioning, sitting down with yourself sitting down with myself and questioning beliefs, habits, you know, lifestyle choices, you know, how approaching a day, how approaching a relationship, you know, breaking down all of those things and really thinking about consciously, consciously making choices about every single little thing that sometimes there are habits that you that we have that are from our childhood or we've inherited that our parents did as kids and then they did and then we did and then that's just how we are it's habitual i think in going there and reading reading broken open or listening to audible doesn't mean that you have to pick apart your entire life and build it up from the ground 
you know, like you don't have to create mm -hmm. a whole new structure for how we live. But if something's not working, it's a magnifying glass to mm -hmm. look at that piece. And then that piece might inform other pieces. But one thing I think about is the loss of control that is very difficult for a lot of humans to consider change is a loss of control a lot it's 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 going somewhere unknown you mm -hmm. know questioning relationships and a hundred percent you know yes i've been friends with this person since i was five it's not filling me up what do i do questioning that do we still keep that relationship how why what's benefiting why am i saying this to my child every day it, should i my tone of voice this that but there's a loss of control in change mm -hmm. and broken open you're you're presenting this like it's okay and you'll be fine if you give this a try and you do investigate how you are, who you are and why you are, that's what I got from it. And it doesn't happen overnight. These things take major practice, progress, reflection, personal, like sometimes you need to put space there between you and that person or you and that thing that is is kind of like huh why do i react that way huh why do i talk or say that thing so maybe putting some space there is important to then recognize your thoughts acknowledge your thoughts you know this book isn't going to make anybody you know just all of a sudden blossom in a day but everything takes practice. And I'll tell you, in two, in, it took two years to put this together. And even, even in its final editing phase that took four months, things were changing then, right? I'm like, I, 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 I'm gonna go a different route. I wanna change this paragraph because I feel differently, right? Or, or I have had more wisdom in this topic that I'm talking about now than I did when I wrote this page a year and a half ago. So it's, it's growth guys. Like I enjoy to be happy. I don't enjoy conflict, but there is conflict. Learning how to find your peace, no matter what conflict is happening around you, that is a very special solace space that only you can experience. And getting there may seem like a challenge, but I laid it out for you. There's there, there, there is a chapter on a six week soul self challenge. And I don't know how many times we've even spoke about it within harvesting you is doing positive things, making positive habit, habits over and over again, you start to do more positive habits, right? Versus doing the negative habits and always going to the negative or, you know, it's like, okay, I can emotionally eat because I had a bad day or I can think about that and make the choice not to do that and to do something else, maybe to put on a song and dance or go sit and play the piano or do something that's uplifting or go meditate or something other than that bad habit. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of inspiration through so many people that have crossed my path, every single person that has crossed my path, including you, everybody has had an impact on me and who I am today. And I follow, you know, the Mel Robbins, the Gabrielle Bernstein's, um, 
I, I have followed them as well. I've take I've indulged in reading and and taking classes and just making myself a priority. I don't, you know, it's funny because when my kids started school, I can remember being in like a room with all the moms and it feeling very clicky Mm. and clicky was never my thing. Like I kind of always just talk to everybody. And that was another one of those things that I even had as a child of like, okay, there's a girl like sitting over there by herself. Like, that's not cool. I should go say hi. Right. Like that was like a push from the universe being like, don't leave somebody out. Don't. And even now, like watching grown adults just form this, they have these walls up and said it in our last podcast you can't you can't you can't hide from an intuitive person who's been through there done that and it's just so like it doesn't mean I, I'm I don't mean that in a bad way I, I'm not saying I'm better I'm not saying I know it all I'm saying like I have put in some serious time effort and work in defining out who I am from my core So I speak on purpose, I think on purpose, I act on purpose, and I let my words touch my heart before they come out my mouth. I put that email that I want to send in drafts for a little bit and go back to it a few times before sending it, right? To make sure that, okay, maybe I need it to, to give my push and be a little strong, but I want to be mindfully um, respectful about it. Even in those times where you feel like someone doesn't deserve the way you would, the, the way you are treating others, they don't deserve that nice treatment. No, they do. Don't be that person. Don't be the, like, go the length, go the mile, run, run, run the run, climb, you know, swim the ocean. Do all the things that you would do for everybody. Hmm. And that's a big piece of this book. It's about humanity. And in order for our younger generations to have a beautiful evolution, we need to get ourselves in check because they are watching, uh, repeating. uh, They're forming habits from our habits. I'm, I, again, no perfection over here. I say all the time, I'm perfectly imperfect. The F-bomb, I drop way too many times in my house, right? It happens. And I'll make sure to be like, you're never allowed to say that. Well, why do you say it? Because that's just, 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 that's just my moment. Mm-hmm. I have moments. I, you know, I wear, anytime I talk about Broken Open, um, one of my dear friends' daughter, when my book released, uh, made me a bracelet and I wear it every time. And it says Broken Open. Isn't that cute? I wore it to all of my book signings. I wore it to all of my interviews. And then today, knowing we were going to talk about this book, I was like, oh, I have to put her bracelet on. And that's Special. nice. That is really, really sweet. It's sweet that she made that for you. and that you Yeah. Know. And you know what's so awesome? And this is another takeaway from this book. When people can be genuinely happy for other people. When you learn the essence of giving up that envy and jealousy, and envy and jealousy is good at times because for some people that sparks something in them to want more and do more. And if you're, if you're using it in that light, that's great. That like that little bit of competition, that little bit of like, Mm -hmm. okay, I got to get my butt moving. Like I want that. I, 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 you know. 
But if you're using envy and jealousy to talk and gossip and be negative and put other people down and uh, that that's not good. And you're going to get that like attraction. So if you're still sitting in the same space you were a year ago or two years ago, that's a problem. If you still ha are, are having these gossiping negative conversations with the same people about the same people, mm -hmm. recognize that. Yeah, there's a huge difference between competition that strengthens our abilities and makes us better versus trying to sabotage or take someone down by and right. then I trying know. to make ourselves look better by putting them down instead of us trying to strive and achieve and be yeah. I think there's a huge unfortunately it's easier to find a flaw in someone than it is to do the hard work for us to be our best. That was good. Yeah. yeah. And that's what this is. That's exactly what this is. Yeah. And it is, it is work. It is hard work. And I once was a know-it-all. And I once thought I did have all the answers. And I once was the one interrupting conversations and trying to get my voice heard. And then all of a sudden, my voice, my voice box, I'll never forget saying I was working with this energy worker, uh, I don't know, maybe like four years ago. And I said, I just feel like my voice is like in a vice. I have so much in here that I need to say and that needs to be spoken, but I don't know how to say it. And she was like, because it's not your time. You're not ready. Because how you're going to say it isn't going to be the way it's supposed to be said or it's meant to be told. So I feel like, you know, this book didn't just come from me. Like it came through me. It came from experience. It came from, hold on, let me go back to experience for a moment. I'm going to use Ava as an example again, because she's just an easy example. All the therapies and whatnot we have been through. There comes a moment, or at least it did for me, where I remember sitting there because we had tried a number of different therapists for a number of different things. And I remember sitting there at one point and I was like, um, can I ask you a few questions? Do you have children? No. Mm. Do you, so not only do you not have children, but you don't have a child that's going through what I'm going through. I'm sorry, you're not the person for me. Doesn't mean that you're not great at your job, but you're not what I need or what she needs, right? So I think experience is so valuable and important. And before this, before all of this, or maybe it was for this to come to fruition. I remember when I would hire dance teachers, you would have the millennials coming right out of college, expecting to be paid top dollar, right? To teach a class. And I'm like, wait a minute. I've been in this a whole lot longer than you. And this teacher has a heck of a lot more experience than you. And she's getting top dollar because she has had the experience. I understand that you have an education and that you paid a lot of money for this education and training, but you don't have the in-classroom experience. So for me, I would always, I, I am opportunity. I had a teacher reach out to me a couple of years ago saying, I am just throwing this out there because I heard it is great to work for you. I've never taught a dance class in my life. I was a dancer my whole life and I've always wanted to teach and work with kids. Will you give me a chance? Absolutely. And I mentored her and now a few years later, she is awesome. 
she's found her own. It's giving people the opportunity, having experience, listening to words of wisdom. You know, you and I have both said it before. You're not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. Those everybody's who don't think that we're for them, there's clearly something they need to learn and listen to and lean into. Because I found that within myself with other people where you're scrolling and you'll be like, oh my God, here goes so-and-so again on a rant about blah, 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 blah. Well, then I started to ask myself, well, then why am I still friends with that person? Why do I still look at their content? Clearly there's something about them that I like that I choose to keep them in my life. Maybe I need to step back for a moment and not be so judgy and take a look at their world and what they have to say. And one community that really, really, I think like set the light under me to like, just get this book in motion was when I became a member of Young Living. I got thrown into this huge network of girl power community. And I had leaders and friends and we'd have meetings and there were Facebook groups and community groups and get togethers. And it was just like girl empowering, girl empowering girl. Now, it doesn't mean that every girl was there like, yay, Aubrey, or yay, Colleen, or right? Because some weren't but they all learned something. And I got a lot of, um, I got a lot of good energy from that. It was, a, it was a really good taste of women empowerment. It, 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 it steered me in the direction. I mean, look, I, I still, look, here I am rubbing my stuff on me to this day. I'm not involved in the business in any way that I once was, but I feel like what that did for me was it, I had to go on that path to continue on my next path. And what's awesome is like all my paths have come together. Like I never just wanted to own a dance studio. I always had a lot of things I wanted to do. And I think some people get really fixated on but I'm, an, but I'm an accountant and that's my job and that's what I'm doing and that's what I have to do. But there's more to you. Like who were you before you were an accountant? What, what do you like to do as a hobby? What do you, do you like to read? What kind of movies do you like to watch? Like there's other stuff there. So I struggled in finding a way to bring all my paths together because I felt pulled in many different directions. As a mom, as an entrepreneur, trying to write this book, doing a uh, young living because I was hustling then, doing my side hustle. But that side hustle taught me a lot about myself and taught me to give myself grace, right? My side hustle at the time taught me I don't want to hustle anymore. So each thing led me to this. And since that, I myself go find myself having days where I'm like, maybe I need to open my own book and take my own advice. Mm. You know, like separated versus kept. Um, you get what you give. Break uh, breaking the cycle. I wanted every chapter to be an impactful, like announcement, like a headline. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that about? You know, breaking the cycle. That's a tough one. And I think every single person has that experience somewhere in their life of some sort of cycle that they have just, like you said earlier, it was just handed down or passed down. It became just part of generations. Um, that was a huge turning point for me. 
when I decided that I needed to stand up and say, um, yeah, I'm no longer going to allow that. And I had to divorce my, a big part of my family. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and that was years prior to writing this book, but it was a part of the journey. Yeah, yeah. That that is that is a big that's challenging to do for many reasons. And I think taking the first step of taking a look at the situation from not our own perspective, but from an outsider's perspective of what's going on with that cycle. And looking at it objectively and saying, you know, the advice I would give to me would be X. Well, why don't I take that advice and do something mm -hmm. about that situation instead of just going through the motions because of family obligation, because of they're relying on me to play this role in this pattern that is comfortable. And I think a lot of these things happen because it gets comfortable by going into these habits of our lives. Yep. And your book really does say, hey, take a look at it. See what you see, listen to your heart. And here is a way to make a change. Now the six week soul self challenge, is that something that you've used for small and big things? Like somebody wants to do something simple, like the new year's resolutions mm -hmm. of, I need to get up and exercise in the morning. I need to quit smoking. I need to drink less. I need to drink more water, whatever those things are. And yep. those big things in life. I mean, is that something that, it feels like we should explore that in harvesting you and do actually do a six week challenge. That'd be awesome. And yes, it started out simple. It started with sugar. Sugar's a tough one. Started with sugar. That was my, that was when I realized if I could quit sugar and I quit sugar for three or four months, then I could do anything because sugar is addictive. Oh, yeah. So when it came to the, the six week soul self challenge, it all stemmed from sugar. Hmm. And how can I do this? Now I chose to go back and eat cake after, but that was a choice. And I'm very mindful about when I eat, how it affects my body. I know. Instead of my whole life, I would just eat that thing because it tasted good no matter what stomach ache or it had me on the floor later, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, find, I, I figured this out when I was like, mm, like 19, maybe, that in giving up sugar and carbs, that I was my ability to be intuitive, my ability to be mm -hmm. feel connected and feel like getting vibes, the whole thing and grounded was huge. But then like eating cake or sweets or bread or any of that stuff mm -hmm. is numbing to those feelings. Do you feel that way too? A thousand percent. It blocks, it blocks you. Alcohol is the number one mm. blockage. Yep. I think, a, I think a lot of, a lot of us think about alcohol as being a numbing tool, but sugar isn't always considered that. Oh, just a little bit's fine. Just a little bit's mm -hmm. fine. But even a little bit does numb. I mean, that's why it feels so good because we're distracting ourselves to the vibrations of what's going on around us. We're not picking up on other people's emotions. We're not, you're not feeling and sensing as strongly. And so there's like this little, 
you know, bubble wrap, we're bubble wrapping ourselves from <laughs> what's going on. In yeah. The it causes it, it. Sugar causes inflammation, carbs cause inflammation. And when we do that, you're, you're building, you're building up and you're not letting in. So yeah. everything's connected. It, it's all connected, but that is so cool that at 19, you were able to recognize well, I feel a whole heck of a lot more open and connected to nature and the universe and everything around me because I stopped eating this or yeah. I stopped eating that. Yeah. I mean, you, you, we're, we're a whole person, yet we're a soul too. So we're this soul inside this body and we got to work together. And, you know, finding your soul self is your mind, your heart, and your gut all being in true alignment with each other. So I have a true tell, you know, how we talk about like, oh, when someone's sick, they have a true tell, like my daughter, I know right away her eyes. I'm like, oh, she's getting sick. Well, I have my own true tell. And when I am in full alignment, my my about a decision or a situation or something happening, we are, we are straightly aligned. It's like, the the, cha the chapter on your chakras like it's 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 a real thing learn about it it's history it's important um for all you mamas out there to really just indulge and understand what all your chakras mean and how they ground you and how they open up here and like bro, i was telling you about life well grow chakra was completely jacked up right it wasn't, I wasn't ready. It wasn't allowed. I wasn't able to speak the words that I had, but I'm sorry. I jumped off topic. The, just the, the grounding, the repetitive, repetitiveness, practicing, having patience, starting small. Starting small with like your reactions to things, your reactions to your children, your re your your irritability about things. Um, like lean into that. Why do you get so irritated when so and so does this? Why do you let that affect you? What they're doing is what they're doing. How you receive their energy is your problem. Broken open is a lot of thought hard thinking I've had people tell me they had to they had to highlight and go back many times because they just couldn't understand but there was something there they needed they wanted more of right they couldn't understand a concept or they and they would go back and they would lean more into that and I'm like that's awesome see that's that's doing it that's doing the work Going back, looking at looking at things, looking at yourself, looking at pieces of the book that you you that stood out, and you're like, oh, there's something there. I encourage, I encourage mamas to listen or read it for your own self growth. This is personal development. This is finding that, so this is having an already always knowing that everything is going to be okay and working out for you as long as you're meeting the universe halfway. Yes. I know we're glitching a little bit. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you're fine right now, but. Okay. I think feeling safe in in reading any book like yours because I think it's a little bit scary sometimes to think about the act of questioning and if you don't the reading or listening doesn't mean that you have to do what is there it doesn't mean that you have to do right. what is there it's taking what pieces that you feel comfortable in doing and challenging yourself in doing and questioning 
and acting and thinking and just taking a moment and a breath to think about what am I doing? Why am I doing it? How am I doing it? And I really do think we should do the six week soul self challenge with something and pick something. Yeah, I think that would be cool. It would be. When you were talking about breaking the cycle, I jumped off topic and I remember what I wanted to say. It is really hard to recognize that there's something that's uncomfortable or something that doesn't make you feel good. Um, learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in situations is key. What really drove me, and I can close my eyes and go back to this moment in time, was when I was breaking a relationship. Uh, you, you're talking, it had to be a decade ago because I think Ava was about two or maybe three. And we were outside of my home having a discussion. And this person was pleading with me. And I knew in my gut, I had to end this relationship. And I turned and I looked at the door and there was my two and a half, three-year-old at the door. And in that instinct, it was like someone just pushed me in my back and was like, you already know what you have to do. And that was reassurance. So this needs to end right now. And no, I'm not thinking about it anymore. I've already made my decision. And then again, when it came with, you know, divorcing my family, I use the word divorce, like there was no paperwork involved, <laughs> but it was, um, again, I mean, I was able to look back on that moment and then think, I mean, you're talking, it's been five and a half years, almost six years since my um, extended family broke up, I remember pondering over everything that was happening. It was extremely emotional time, lots of highs, lows, lots of phone calls, fights, this, that, lots of people involved, right? Wasn't just one person. It was like a whole five people. And again, I looked at my kids and thought, what what would I be doing by accepting this behavior to them? Because I don't accept what has been done to me. So why would I keep it going? Because then I'd just be repeating a cycle. So I chose to be the person to break lineage and to start new for the sake and mental health of my family and me. Kids need a happy mom. They do. And they need a brave they mom. And that's very brave and it's very bold. And it's, it, you're, you're doing what you say to do. You have lived it, you're doing it, you're, it's one thing to say, hey, take a look at your life and see what's not working and let's fix it. You know, those, that's easy to say, but to really dig in and really do it, do the work, experience it, go through it, evolve and implement and then share it in a book. Yeah. You know, one of my, I had a review and it was a, it was a one-star review and the person wrote, she took a bunch of pictures and a bunch of quotes from other people and threw it in a book. And I hope that person is watching this today because clearly you didn't read the book and clearly you have no idea, no idea what me or anybody else. I feel like with. every photo in the book is like you or your family, is it not? Yeah, and they're, and they're, um, I found even my editor who is, is, was, she was, she's my biggest critic. Like 
with everything. I've, I've known her for a really long time. She'll always play devil's advocate. She'll always play the other side. And she's like, I really love this picture here. I really like this was tasteful here, the way you did that. So I tried my best. I tried to put my best foot out there, my best foot forward for those who are open to receiving and expanding their life and evolving their relationships and learning to love themselves. And to say you love yourself to some people will say that's conceited. That's not conceited. That's being so, so fully confident yeah. in who I am and the decisions I make and the way I live my life. It doesn't mean I'm perfect and I don't think I'm perfect. I just have this ability to know that I'm always protected and that I'm being guided and I listen to those things and I look at myself in the mirror and I make sure times three before I go ahead and do something that I know is going to change or impact others, especially. Hmm. Well, you definitely have impacted others. And I hope that for everyone listening and watching, they'll go and they'll check out Broken Open. We've got links to it on our, yeah. everywhere, our website, on um, our link tree. It's on all of our different social media accounts. And it's, it's, in stores, you can buy it at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, you can get the Audible. There's so many different ways that you can get broken open by Aubrey. So I hope that you will check it out and you will take, you know, even a listen at the sample on the Audible because you can listen to a little sample and, and find out if this, this is for you. And I hope it is. And if it is, we would love to hear from you and hear what what spoke to you? And if you are going to try the six week soul self challenge, I would love to know because I really do. Yeah. One of the things that I'm trying to do in my life is to stop saying you, if you know, and that, so maybe that will be my little thing little that I'm going to work on is to be less, uh, be less that way of saying, you know, and you when I really mean me because I'm talking about me and how I feel so replace you with I yes me I how I feel and not you know <laughs> and and that that clip on the audible I promise I don't read that fast that's only the <laughs> it's so fast Why? it had to be Oh. Um, the sample clip had to be like a certain way. So it just sounds like I just talk super, super fast. And I promise I don't, that's only, that's only that first clip. Cause some of my girlfriends were like, oh my gosh, it was like sentence to sentence. I said, I promise the rest, just keep going at chapter one. You'll be like, oh, there she is. <laughs> that's funny. That really is funny. It's like, we'll get through the book in like no time at all because it's speed read to you because right, I'm talking like this and you have no idea what I'm talking or saying or doing and I'm like people are gonna think whoa I lost her at like sentence one you know I've done that with audiobooks where I've slowed down the book uh-huh or I've sped up the book because the person's talking way too slow for me and I can't I'm like okay I'm about to fall off my chair listening to you talk <laughs> so so yeah you can also do that too but yeah Okay. I think we're well, thank you. this conversation and I'm really glad that you shared all of this with us because I've been wanting to hear you speak about Broken Open for a while and this has been very helpful and nice to listen to. Yeah. Get a little more insight on some, some, some personal detail. There's so much more. It'll come in, in the right timing. I trust God's timing. He will tell me when, you know, more truths will be unveiled.
more personal because I've had people ask me flat out, like even strangers, you know, write in and say like, Hey, um, what happened in your life that got you to this? And I was like, Oh, that's a novel. <laughs> that's not going to be this thin. <laughs> will that be in the next book though? That will be in the next book. Hmm. Stay tuned. Yep. Yep. The the cause of the opening, or I don't know. Something <laughs> like that. How it broke open. <laughs> How it broke open. Right. Right. Oh. Well, thank you, mamas, for taking this time with us. Thanks, Teresa, for talking about my book. And thank you, Aubrey, for sharing your book with us and all the meaning behind it. This has been a really... I want to say relaxing conversation because I've gotten just to sit here and listen to all of these wonderful things from you. So thank you. And I hope you guys will visit our website, harvestingyou.com and check out some more videos on YouTube and listen on Spotify and send us messages on Instagram because we would love to hear from you.